This is a tutorial on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. The first thing that we're going to talk about is solving exponential equations. If I wanted to solve 5 to the 4x power is equal to 35 for x, I have to come up with some value of x that when multiplied by 4 is the power of 5 that's equal to 35. Well, there is no even or integer power of 5 that's equal to 35, so x is going to be some decimal. And if we wanted to solve this, the easiest way to get this x out of our exponent is to do the opposite of exponential. Instead, we're going to take the log of both sides of this equation. Now, it doesn't matter what your base is for the log, so I'm going to use the common log, or the base 10, and this is going to be the log of 5 to the 4x power, and that's going to be equal to the log of 35. Now because of the power property of logs, this 4x that is an exponent, I can take this out and I can put this in front of my log of 5. So this is going to be 4x times the log of 5 and this is going to be equal to the log of 35. Well, the log of 5 and the log of 35 are just numbers. So to solve this for x, I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 4. And I'm also going to divide it by the log of 5. On my left hand side, my 4's are going to cancel, because 4 divided by 4 is just 1. And the log of 5 divided by the log of 5 is just 1, so those are going to cancel as well. So on the left hand side, I'm just left with x. On the right hand side, I have the log of 35 over 4 times the log of 5. Now the log of 35 that's approximately 1.544. And the log of 5, well that's about 0 0.699. If I take 1.544 and I divide it by 4 times 0 0.699, I'm going to get my x is equal to approximately 0 0.55. Let's look at our next example. Here we have 2 times 4 to the 10x is equal to 50. Now you could immediately take the log of both sides of this equation to get to our x. But instead, let's first isolate this 4 to the 10x. Let's divide both sides of this equation by 2. Then we'll have 4 to the 10x is equal to 25. Now let's take the log of both sides. If we take the log of both sides, we'll have the log of 4 to the 10x is equal to the log of 25. And again, I've chosen the common log, or the log base 10. Now because on the left hand side I have a 10x in the exponent, I can use the power property and pull it out front. So we'll end up with 10x times the log of 4 is equal to the log of 25. Now I divide both sides by 10, and I also divide them by the log of 4. On my left hand side, my 10's will cancel, and so will the logs of 4. So on the left hand side, I'm just left with x, and on the right hand side I have the log of 25 divided by 10 times the log of 4. Well the log of 25 is approximately 1.398. The log of 4 is approximately 0 
And if I take 1.398 and divide it by 10 times 0 0.602, I'll find out that x is equal to approximately 0 0.232. So that's how you can use logs to solve exponential equations. Now let's try solving logarithmic equations. Here we have the log with a base of two of four x is equal to eight, and we need to solve for x. Well, the easiest way to solve a logarithmic equation is to write this in exponential form. Remember, if I have the log of b of x, and that's equal to y, that's the same as writing b to the y is equal to x. So in this case, we have two to the eighth power equal to four x. Well, this is pretty easy to solve. Two to the eighth power is 256. That's still equal to four x, so if I divide both sides by four, I find out that x is equal to 64. So if you ever have a logarithmic equation with a variable inside the log, just convert it to an exponential equation. Now sometimes we have log equations with several logs in the equation. Here we have the log of four plus two times the log of x minus the log of three is equal to two. Well, before we can convert these, into exponential equations, we're gonna have to put them all together into one logarithmic equation. To do this, we're gonna use all the log properties. The first step here will be to get rid of any coefficients on any of our logs. And only two times the log of x has the coefficient. And that's just the two. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this two, and using the power property, we're gonna put it back inside the log. If we do that, we'll have the log of four plus the log of x squared minus the log of three. And this is still equal to two. Now I'm just left with several logs being added and subtracted together. So I'm gonna proceed from left to right, putting these together. First, I'm gonna take my first two, log of four and the log of x squared, and because these are added together, I'm going to use the product property. This is the same as the log of four times x squared. Now this is still being subtracted with the log of three and this is still equal to two. So now I have these two logs and I'm gonna put them together using the quotient rule because these are subtracted that means they're divided, so this is going to be the log of four x squared divided by three. And this is still equal to two. Now that I've got this into one logarithm, I can rewrite this as an exponential equation. This log is the common log, and this is the log base 10. So we know that. So to write this in the exponential form, this is going to be 10 squared is equal to four x squared over three. Now 10 squared is 100, so this is four x squared over three is equal to 100. If I multiply both sides by three, I'm gonna get four x squared is equal to 300. Divide both sides by four, and I'm gonna get x squared is equal to 75. Take the square root of both sides, and I'm gonna get the absolute value of x is equal to the square root of 75. Now the square root of 75, I can take a perfect square out of 75, this is the same as the square root of three times 25. 25 is a perfect square of five, so this is the same as five square roots of three. 
So I have the absolute value of x is equal to 5 square roots of 3. Or x is equal to 5 square roots of 3. Or x is equal to negative 5 square roots of 3. Now looking at these solutions, we have to go back and check them. If I were to plug in negative 5 square roots of 3 into my original equation, I'd be plugging it in for x here, and I'd be taking the log of a negative number. And you can't take the log of a negative number, so this negative solution is extraneous. And the only real solution we have is that x is equal to 5 square roots of 3. So if you ever end up with a complicated log expression with several logs in the expression, you have to combine these logs before you can convert them into an exponential equation. Then from the exponential equation, you can solve for x. The last thing we have to talk about is the change of base formula. The change of base formula just lets us change the base of our logarithmic expression. If I have the log of b to the x and I wanted to change the base of this log, well then I can rewrite this as the log to my new base of x divided by the log to my new base of b, which is my old base. So if I have the log base 3 of 4 and I wanted to convert it to the log base 5, and I would just have the log base 5 of 4 over the log base 5 of 3. The change of base formula is very useful when you're trying to solve for logs in your calculator. Most calculators that have a log button have the common log button. This log button always assumes that you have a log base of 10. But what if you wanted to solve a log that didn't have the base of 10? Well then you could use the change of base formula. If we wanted to solve for the log base 2 of 5 in our calculator, we would have to convert this to the log base 10, or the common log. And to do that, we would use our change of base formula, and this would look like log base 10 of 5 divided by the log base 10 of 2. Now the log base 10 again is just the log that you usually have on a scientific or graphing calculator. So this is the log of 5 divided by the log of 2. Now the log of 5 is approximately 0 0.69897. The log of 2 is approximately 0 0.30103. If you do this division, we'll find out that the log base 2 of 5 is equal to approximately 2.32. So that's how you use the change of base formula, and that completes the tutorial on solving exponential and logarithmic equations.